Hello YouTube, welcome to part two of this video on Anderson power poles. In this segment, I will talk about how to uh, prepare and crimp some Anderson power pole connectors. Uh, for this, you will need some wire, the appropriate gauge contact, a uh, pair of housings, well actually you need two contacts, a uh, pair of housings, and uh, this little roll pin. You may not have this roll pin depending on where you buy your Anderson power pole connectors. If you buy an off-branded one, um, you may not have these. They essentially go in a small hole found in the middle of the connector, uh, and these are used to just hold the two halves together because sometimes they can be a little bit loose, especially if they've been worn out from a lot of transportation or uh, just from, I guess, wear and tear if you reuse housings a lot. Um, but that roll pin is kind of good insurance anyways. Uh, anyways, so you need that, and a good crimper, and a wire stripper of some sort. So let's dig in. Here is an example cable. It's already been crimped. There's a very strong crimp on there. You're not pulling that off at all. First off, you want to strip off approximately the length of insulation required from both... Uh, sides of your cable. I'm using a 12 gauge speaker cord just because I don't have any red and black zip cord handy but regardless I'm going to follow the uh, positive and negative properly. So strip your insulation to approximately the correct length twist the wires then now is where you want to be careful. If you look at this connectors orientation you can note that the uh, sort of tongue on the bottom here requires the contact to be facing in this orientation. So note that when you actually have your cable and your contact, you need to apply the contact of the cable in such a way that it actually fits on properly. Otherwise, you'll have it upside down and you might may even inadvertently insert positive to negative and negative to positive if you're not paying very careful attention. I would recommend double checking everything before you crimp because there's no real way of going back and these contacts are a little bit pricey um, compared to some other contacts. Uh, you may need to give this a few tries just because they size these connectors just big enough to fit your wire. Um, plus I kind of cut, cut a bit of a ragged edge on this so it's not perfect. Plus, doing it in front of camera probably makes it worse. As soon as you try and do something on camera, it all goes to hell. There we go. Now we have positive on this side. You can see the little plus signs with the contact orientation in the correct direction. So, you want to uh, pull this back a little bit just so you have some room. Open up your crimper. Now you'll note that this crimper has 15, 30, and 45 amp. Actually, it won't focus on that. But... Select the correct size on your tri crimp crimper, insert the power pole, and then gently squeeze down until it starts to hold by itself. And then move your hand further back on the crimper so you can really put some force on it. And then crimp it until it releases. And there, you have a good crimp on a power pole. This will never come off. So, just to repeat the process. Actually, if I turn off manual focusing, you may actually be able to see some of this. It's a little tricky to get these on, but once you get good at it, it gets a little faster. These are the first few ones I've done for today, and I'm a little bit uh, off. Plus, my cuts are kind of ragged. Okay, so our connector's on there again. Just make sure it matches the orientation. Take your crimper, line it up, insert it in the correct hole. And make sure you don't do this it actually has to go into... Oh, 
make sure you don't do this where it's actually above this uh, spot you'll break the contact make sure it actually goes into this black piece of plastic here and there you go now once you have that done just match positive to positive and you should just be able to insert your contacts sometimes it takes a little bit of force um, plus you have to kind of line them up and rotate them a little bit to push them in so it takes a bit of force to get going but once you have it sliding in it actually works quite well you'll hear these little clicks as they actually lock into place and then just give it a quick pull test yeah that's not going anywhere and just to finish off you can insert the roll pin into the middle here you can see it sticking out and you may just want a little pair of pliers or something hardened metal to push it in to save your fingers from a little round imprint so this connector is done now these connectors have a huge amount of uh, current potential for their size and the fact that they can disconnect and connect so easily um, just like so and these connect and disconnect cycles don't really wear them out at all now in the few minutes that I've left I just wanted to talk quickly about this crimper uh, this crimper is forty dollars from powerworks.com um, you may think it's not a good investment but trust me it is just because of the engineering tolerances on the housing itself um, you can't really crimp power poles without this kind of crimper you can get a cheaper one from their website, but I would really recommend this because the ratcheting force makes it so that when it releases, you know that you have a good crimp. Um, so otherwise, this is your standard ratcheting crimper. Um, you have a little release catch here, so if you've crimped par partially and you need to release it to fix something, you just push on this and it releases open. Um, one neat feature about this is, is that you can get a die set to replace these two dies for the power poles and they will accommodate uh, I believe the OEM style connectors found on some ham radios definitely the SB50 or Anderson 75 amp size contacts um, also insulated and non insulated uh, standard crimp terminals as well as coax and a couple others but it seems to be a good investment if you want to get a good crimper without spending a huge amount of money. It actually seems like a pretty good amount of value for what you're getting. Um, if you're doing more than like a few power pole connections, buy this. It's worth the $40 because it saves you a ton of time and frustration and wasted connectors because it's really easy to ruin them or screw them up without this. Um, plus the 45 amp terminals, you can't really crimp with a standard crimper too easy. I'll show you one of them. These 45 amp terminals have a little U shape in them. Yeah, what fitting in here will do that properly? If you try and do this, if you try and do this, it's not going to crimp properly. So, it's up to you, $40, but definitely worth it for my opinion. So anyways, uh, hope you like this video and part one on Anderson Power Poles. Uh, but otherwise, if you like this video, please rate, subscribe, and comment.